my first time doing a uh, presentation on Zoom. So thank you for your help, Greg, I appreciate it. So I'm calling my presentation, The Healthcare Maze. And why did I do that? I looked up what the word maze meant and it's defined as a network of paths and hedges designed as a puzzle, which one has to find their way. And when I went out to apply for Medicare, boy, that's what I found. It was a maze. The vocabulary is unique and the acronyms, oh my. So fasten your seatbelt, it's a bumpy ride. My goal today is to share my experience and hopefully make it easier for you when you cross this bridge. I found a lot of paths and I have called them the swim lane and I'll introduce you to the different paths I found. This is not a deep dive into Medicare. A dive into Medicare takes an hour to almost two hours to comprehend. So if you're interested in a deep dive, I'll give you some resources or put a note in chat and Greg and I will try and line someone up. So let's walk through this material together. So I'm gonna go over the history. I'm gonna go over the Medicare process. I'm gonna go over costs because that's my favorite topic and where to find help. So first of all, I wanna say I am not an expert this information is for presentation purposes only and make sure you do your own homework. So let's start off with the background. When I went to, to search this, I found that healthcare in America in 1940, only 9% of our population had healthcare insurance. And then by 1950, whoa, it exploded. 50% of America had healthcare insurance. So here we are today, 2021, 92% of America has health care insurance. So what caused all that? So right after Pearl Harbor, 1942, our government passed something called the Emergency Price Control Act. And they did that because they were trying to fight inflation. So they froze prices and they froze wages. Well, employers were trying to hire tons of people to build all those trucks, planes, jeeps and ships and they needed people and they wanted to attract talent so they introduced us to something called fringe benefits and yes that's the start of pensions and health insurance being attached attached to your employer so then the irs came along and said gee let me sweeten the pie a little health insurance is exempt from federal income tax and payroll tax making it again very lucrative for our employers to continue to provide this. In the 1950s, 85% of the cost was covered by our employer. Today, that's about 22%. So a little more on the background about how we got here. In 1965, Johnson signed the Medicare Act. So that's the start. And when he did that, the cost to the average beneficiary was $4. So in 1972, we added long-term disability and end-stage renal, which I looked that up and for anybody that has to experience that, that's that kidney stuff. Then in 1973, the feds funded the development and expansion of HMOs. Hmm, interesting. That will later be known to you guys as Medicare Part C. Then in 77, they created the support structure Anybody that's on Medicare has run into the CMS, and that stands for the Center for Medicare Services. And if you're on Medicare or any other medical stuff, you run into the billing codes, and they're known as CPTs. So then in 2003, we added drug coverage to Medicare, and they snuck this one in on most of us anyway. Um, Medicare premiums will now be based on your income. And then the next big one that we experienced is in 2010, the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare was passed. So back in year 2000, the typical Medicare person for their Part B paid $45. And today we're paying $160 to $175 for Medicare Part B. So I also want to note one thing about this is this healthcare market today in 2020 the money sitting through that is $4.1 trillion. 
So when I retired back in 2016 and found myself in this healthcare maze, I thought, how hard can this be? I'm a supply chain manager or a professional buyer. I bought corporate jets and mainframes. 30 years buying experience, I'll make it through this. So I scheduled lunches with my buddies that were already on Medicare. And when I came back from those lunches, I mean, I was so confused. I said, okay, I started researching it. And I'll flip to this next page where I will introduce you to what is called the 15, 13, I said three, three to five ways, three to 15 ways that we deliver healthcare. And the important thing here is that you have to decide where you are today and when something will occur and you'll change lanes and need other kinds of healthcare. So this next spreadsheet's gonna blow your mind. So let me walk through a few of these key issues. Number one, 55% of America is in this top category here called employer sponsored group insurance. And again, that's how America gets their healthcare coverage. We have 177 million people in that swim lane. The next big one is Medicaid. In California, that's called Medi-Cal. And again, we have another 76 million in that swim lane. So Medicare is what I'm covering and Harry's covered the direct purchase marketplace. So the Medicare recipients, there's 64 million of us. And in Harry's swim lane, uh, there is 45 million. So needless to say, these are other swim lanes that people may be in. There may be more out there. This is all I found. But regardless, it adds up to 432 million. Well, the population of the US is only 332 million. So I guess that means 100 million people are out there with dual coverage. Hmm, nice. So I want to spotlight a couple other things. The uninsured in America is down to 8%, but that is still 28 million people. I also want to spotlight how much, and what I did was I bolded the numbers to show how much the government was actually paying for or subsidizing, and they are paying for 241 million people healthcare insurance. So out of 332 million, 241, the government is subsidizing a ton. Okay, so enough about the background. This is the Medicare process, and I thought it showed best as a uh, flowchart. So when you enter Medicare, you basically have two paths. You have to decide how you want your coverage. You have original Medicare and you have a Medicare Advantage plan. But by the way, those two words uh, have several other names and you'll hear some of them as we go through this presentation. We have 64 million people on Medicare and 36 million people choose origi original Medicare and 28 million people Cover, uh, choose the Advantage plans. So I'm gonna walk through a little bit about these plans. Part A is free and the desired age to sign up is 65. Medicare Part B is not free and does not cover 100% of your medical, covers 80%. You have a prescription drug plan and that is primarily for your out of patient drug coverage. Part A covers your in-hospital drug coverage. So that's another insurance policy that you buy. And then you have, because Medicare Part B only covers 80% of your healthcare, you require, you may require or choose, most of us do, a Medicare supplement or a Medigap plan. So that's this swim lane. And I'll give you some cost about how much this cost in a minute. Then the second swim plan is, oh, and by the way, in how you want your insurance delivered, if you're one of those people that wants to be able to go to the Mayo Clinic or you're traveling in Europe, you may wanna look at the original Medicare plan because um, you those advantages are not in an advantage plan. The cost difference between these two, just so uh, you know, I'll give you more detail on cost in a second, but it's about $100 to $150 a month. So that could be sizable on a budget. 
So a Medicare Advantage plan, now I don't have one of these. So uh, later in our talks, people that know more about this, feel free to, to chat. But they usually, they combine A, B, and D. And that's again, your hospital, your healthcare provider, and your drug plans. That's typically provided over here. So you don't require any additional policies. It's kind of one-stop shopping, but you are limited with a network. Okay, so this slide, I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough. I'm not gonna go through all of this. This is for you to read later, but I do wanna warn you about two things. Sign up for Medicare on time. You have a Medicare Part A, you sign up for that typically at 65, and Medicare Part B when you no longer have credible employer coverage. I wanna footnote something here that's important. The insurance companies that are out there want you on Medicare as soon as possible because that becomes your prime provider. So it's important to know what their objective is. Don't miss these signups. So when you choose original Medicare, you run into shopping for these supplements. And all I wanna do is share with you that it, it is alphabet soup again. And, but here it is, they call these different plans you can buy on the marketplace, A, B, C, D, E, F, so, and so on. And then the government regulates these plans so that all insurance providers offer the same product. So be aware of these, they're out there. Um, and again, these Medicare supplement plans cover the 20% that Medicare doesn't. So now on to cost. So a typical family budget in America, excuse me, income in America is about 78,000. So let's round it off at 80K. I know the Bay Area can get a little bit more than that. But what's important about this chart is it shows us how much of our money we actually spend in taxes. Now this chart only shows federal and state taxes and I'll show you in a minute, I've added yet another little secret tax we all pay. So this comes into kind of handy because healthcare is down here. And on this chart, a person making um, 80,000, basically they've got healthcare expenses of around $5,000 a year. So this website where I found that is called howmuch.net. And that's what they do is they try and put all these money things into graphics. So if you wanna play around, uh, this is a great site. Also, if you don't keep track of your spending and you don't have a budget, this gives you kind of an overall ratio about how you might be spending your money. It's an interesting walk into uh, you know, where your money goes. So back to where we were, where does healthcare fit in this? Number one in our spending is taxes. Federal tax, state tax, sales tax, and I've thrown in property tax. That's number one. Number two through four in our spending is housing, that's our rent and mortgage, transportation, cars, gas, maintenance, insurance, and then food. And I'll include in there both in home and away. And number five is right up there and increasing at a run rate of six to 8% a year. So I told you I would share a typical budget with you so you can see an itemized cost on uh, healthcare. So of course I gotta use my own profile. So I'm single. So this is for one person, couples, you can double this amount. Uh, I will just say I'm in my seventies. Health issues, I'm pretty healthy, one or two good little chronic conditions. And I live in Northern California. And the reason that's important in Northern California is because this is definitely state these prices that you will pay is definitely state and zip code specific. So I'm itemizing these details and here comes that $165 a month that the feds will charge me. That's as long as my, oh, here's another acronym for you. MAGI, they call it, Modified Adjusted Gross Income. So if you're making less than $97,000 a year, it's around $165. Then you have that supplement Medigap policy that I talked about. And the one that I chose is currently running about $252. When I started, this was around 160. My drug 
coverage. This is my outpatient drug coverage. Uh, I plugged in a number of $30. I typically, uh, I have paid anywhere from $30 to $40 for this. Um, I don't have any deductibles on, this, on the path that I'm on. So I just plug this in here as a placeholder. Then you have drug collect, uh, excuse me, deductibles and copays. So I plugged in about $500 for that. Now, Medicare does not cover dental, vision, over-the-counter products, or hearing. So I plugged in some numbers and you can quickly see that I get to around $700 a month or about $8,000 a year for a typical retiree. Now, a Medicare Advantage plan will be about $100 to $150 a month less, but you've got more copays and deductibles. That's what I've been told. So moving along, I warned you earlier that Medicare charges you based on your income. So again, this is one of those uh, charts and graphs that you can study later. And here in this first line, making less single person, making less than $97,000 is paying the 165000 excuse me, $165 a month for uh, insurance. The reason this is important is that if you sell your home, you can easily grow into another bracket and your um, monthly Medicare premium could run you four to $500 a month. Now, the good news is it only lasts for the one year. And then again, it surprises you because they take your income from two years ago. So they have the same thing on your drug plan. And again, here's the premiums. If you're less than 97, no adders but you get down to, uh, if you sell your house in one year, you're going to pay uh, an additional $70 on, on your drug plans. So what are some critical indicators? First off, watch inflation. Second, watch what our government is doing. As I noted to you earlier, they're footing the bill for a lot of this. Changes, insurance companies are consolidating. Doctors are moving and retired. Some just get so fed up with the system they leave. Hospitals are acquiring each other and merging. The medical uh, hardware and service industry is constantly offering new products that may or may not be on the Medicare approved list. And the pharma and drug industry is doing the same thing. A couple of examples about that is, um, you know, the new Pfizer drug called Paxiloboid is the new antiviral they're using if you get COVID and end up in the hospital. Well, that's not on the uh, Medicare approved list. It's not FDA approved. So if you get COVID when the emergency note uh, expires, I'm not sure you're gonna get this drug if you're on Medicare. Second good example on this one is the shingle shot. You know, many, many years ago, I got the infamous single, shingle shot and they said that was a lifetime drug. Well, five years later, they said the efficacy went away and no longer, and they have a new drug. That's good news. Bad news. It's not on the Medicare approved list. And it was $200 per shot. And it's a two shot series. So out of pocket came $400 for single shots. So there's just a couple examples. This is, um, you need to do your research. You need to know what your docs are prescribing and pay attention. So I learned through Monte Carlo simulators that uh, the um, life expectancy they use in those can be entered by yourself, but are frequently entered by an advisor. So I wanna warn people to make sure you know what they're using in these retirement simulators. The average life expectancy prior to COVID was 79. Today it's around 77. The good news, if you make it to 65, you can add another 17 to 19 years to that. So that takes you up to 84. So know your age is used in these tools before you decide it's time to retire. I know of a friend of mine that recently told me a good story. He said that he went to his financial advisor and thought, and the advisor advised him he had enough money to retire. But then he questioned, what did you add for medical cost? 
And he found out the advisor had not added anything. Once he added the medical cost, my friend was still working and for a long time. So be aware of what goes into these numbers. So again, final thoughts of forecasting. Plan for the prices to go up. Uh, preliminary numbers is six to 8% a year. Um, consider a health savings account. Uh, Harry went over that. While you're healthy and younger, it can be a nice stash for when you need to pay these other medical bills later. Uh, fidelity, you might wanna establish one account for just uh, medical cost. And Fidelity suggests today 315,000 per couple. So I, I, I'm a business girl, so I try to create hedges when I can. So here's a few that I've uh, highlighted for you. You can relocate. The cost for Medicare uh, and all these medical things change and vary per state and per zip code. You can work longer, get a second career that offers healthcare insurance. This is one I did. I bought healthcare mutual funds and a few stocks. I own stock in Pfizer and I'm really glad. Invest in your health. You know this one. <laughs> we hear it all the time, diet and exercise. And then last but not least, don't forget to evaluate a long-term health care plan. Um, they're expensive. Uh, they say the sweet spot for those is age of 59. So understand your wild cards. And by that, I mean what is unknown and unpredictable, which is kind of how long we're going to last on this planet. So know your chronic conditions, your health. Uh, look at your DNA. You've got to support yourself for maybe 20 years, maybe 30 years. So last but not least, I'm going to cover some alerts and key takeaways. And again, I mentioned this one, sign up for Medicare on time. There's penalties. A, B, and D all have penalties and they're different. Original Medicare does not cover long-term care, outpatient prescription drugs, outpatient prescription drugs, sorry, I misspoke, dental care, routine care, routine, routine vision care, hearing aids, overseas cares, and as I footnoted, some Medicare Advantage plans do cover these items. So next is insurance companies cannot ask you healthcare questions during your initial enrollment period, which is three months before you turn 65 and three months after. After that, you may be asked healthcare questions. More than likely, they'll come to you in the form of an application. So you, you will be asked, and they call it underwriting questions, which I didn't even know what that word meant. I had to go look. It's a professional risk assessment, and they can deny you. So a little about cost and pricing. This whole domain, hospitals, doctors, drugs, is all anchored in what I call list price. So know that that's the prices that comes first on those bills. So ask, negotiate, and shop. Now you might say, yeah, you end up in an emergency and that is an unplanned health occurrence. And no, you, you can't ask, you can't negotiate, you can't shop. But if you're gonna have a knee replacement, you can. When you're out buying drugs, you can. And there's lots of paths out there. And I, I've given you some in the help material um, that I will make sure everyone gets. Last but not least, once you choose a Medicare Advantage plan or any plan for that, this may be the, the last path for you. You may not be able to upgrade. So, you may be able to downgrade your plans. That seems very, um, everyone I've talked to, that seems to be okay. All these companies let you downgrade your plans. But to switch back and forth between a Medicare Advantage and an, an original Medicare, it, it may not be as easy as it sounds. I'm getting mixed messages on that. So be aware you may not be able to downgrade or upgrade. So help. I'm not gonna go over all this help. I just want you to know that there's Medicare counseling. Um, several people have also uh, used this service as well at SourceWise. Uh, this is a local service. All, all states have a similar service. I've referenced that down below. 
but I really was impressed with the service. Uh, they do both in-person counseling and they have tons of virtual information on their website. Uh, go to their event p- events page and there's tons of information out there for deep dives. And the second thing I really liked in all the help that I've gotten is these two books called Get What's Yours. One covers Medicare and one covers Social Security. I've bought them for myself and my family members, and I found them simple uh, explanations. It makes it very understandable. Those are my two favorites. I'm throwing in the package for people later that are looking at this, a whole list of definitions, trying to explain what they are. We all have gaps in insurance in our, in our lifetime. You don't know whether you're uh, gonna retire early and be a fire person, you're gonna be self-employed, you encounter a layoff. Here's places to go for gap insurance or gap care. I was actually surprised how many free clinics were still in San Jose. So at every presentation I've been to on healthcare, I'm always asked questions about how can immigrants get healthcare, uh, excuse me, Medicare. So I've tried my best to answer that and I'll include that in the package for people who wanna explore that. Um, There are some avenues out there, but they're few and far between. Basically, in a nutshell, you need to be a U.S. citizen or a legal permanent resident on a green card. So again, the Medicare alphabet, here you go. I I include a slide on that for people. Um, I don't know what to say about this other than to include that Medicare Part A uh, covers all your drugs for inpatient care. So while you're in the hospital, they take care of all your drugs. Your prescription drugs down here, part D, uh, that's where you usually purchase a plan. Again, the Medicare um, acronyms, I'll include this in the package, HMOs, PPOs, EPOs, there's four or five more new ones, um, but at least this will get you started. And with that, Uh, Let's open it up for questions. This is a very complicated topic, and I'm sure everybody's got a few questions. If you don't, I'll be surprised. (laughs) 